So there are these wicked people, wicked evil people who hold on to this idea called the reprobate doctrine. All right, what's the reprobate doctrine? It's a Calvinist doctrine. All right, did you hear what I just said? It's yeah. a Calvinist doctrine. So Calvinists never left my sight. They will always, they are my number one enemy, and I will kick them until the Lord says I'm done kicking them. Amen. Because they are permeating online. And I know that you Calvinists are just watching this right now, and then you just flood the comments. You guys are worse than these anti-jerks over here who are so hateful against homosexuals. You Calvinists are worse than them, actually. But I, I'm not going to get on that one. I've, I've seen online. Okay, anyway, aside from that fact, so this is a Calvinist doctrine. So basically, what they believe, all right, I'll try to be as accurate as possible before the Calvinists throw a fit, and then I'll give a plain language that the Calvinists would say is an inaccurate interpretation. So basically, the reprobate doctrine is that a lost sinner has, does not have the ability, does not have the ability to repent and believe on Jesus Christ for salvation because they're so depraved and lost in their wickedness. So that's the reprobate doctrine. Now, the thing is this, is that, so there's this group of cultic pastors, there's this weird cultic pastor that have their little weird conference, and then their weird little conference, they want to do this to get publicity from the news. How do you know that? Because they deliberately scream on top of their lungs so that whenever the news camera catches on to them. Yeah. That's what happens. In their preaching meeting, they'll be preaching normally, and then once this cult pastor with a beard sees this uh, camera guy coming in, then all of a sudden he changes the tone of his voice and he starts screaming at them. You know why? Because he knows that that's how he's going to get publicity. See, so these people, it shows how desperate they are for attention. They're truly internet media losers. Amen. They're a small weird fringe. They can only get attention popularity through the media. Yep. That's why. Okay, so this is their doctrine, what they want to apply for homosexuals. So Calvinists, they don't go this far. Calvinists know that homosexuals can get saved. But these weird cultic fringe, so let's call them cultic pastors, they take, this they take this reprobate doctrine from the Calvinists and they want to apply that to homosexuals automatically. It's as if you, you commit the sin of homosexuality, you're automatically a reprobate. That's the idea. Now, what do we Bible believers believe in? We do believe there is such a thing that God can give you chance after chance after chance and then the Lord will give you up. We do believe in that fact. Sometimes a person is so far down into sin that there's nothing you can do or even what God will do. Why? Because God believes in free will. Amen. So that debunks the Calvinist doctrine right here. It debunks the Calvinist doctrine because we believe that man at his free will, that's the reason why he ended up like this. Calvinists, they're just so wicked to say that, no, you're a reprobate. No free will involved. So if God chose you to be the elect, you're the elect. If you become a reprobate, sorry. That's totally wickedness. That's evil. Now, these cultic pastors, they, they don't believe in Calvinism. So they believe in free will. But they assume that if you're a homosexual, you are already this reprobate where it's too late for you. So that's where Calvinists and these guys differ. Now, we're going to debunk both of these heretics, okay? So let's look at Romans chapter 1. Look at verse 24. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator. Verse 26. For this, God, uh, for this cause God gave them up unto vile affections, for even their women, now look at this, these are homosexuals, did change the natural use. See, you, you women, as well as men, have a natural use tendency and a desire or an attraction to the opposite sex. That's natural. It is unnatural if you have a sexual attraction for a tree outside the yard. <laughs> now let's keep reading here. Into that which is what? Against nature. See, it's not nature. So it's not scientific. That's what God even pointed out. Your Bible's a scientific book. God knows what's scientific, what's not. 
Verse 27, and likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the women, burned in their lust one toward another. Men with men, working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves recompense of their error which was meet. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. See that? So God gave them up. Now, what's our answer to this? Our answer to this is pretty simple right here. So we do believe that there's such a thing as too late where God can't do something where we can't do something. But here's the idea. The idea is, uh, I'm trying to think of a different color here. Okay, here we go. So when God gives up, it is a matter of fact in the Bible, he can restore as well. Here's an example. He cast off Israel. But there are so many verses where God says that I'll restore you. Yep. Here's another example. The prodigal son. The father gave up in his son who became a prodigal. He had nothing to do with him, left him be. But what happened? The father was able to restore the son. But it depends upon free will yep. what these people want to do. So here's something. We believe that they can be so down, depraved into wickedness. We believe in that. And because they are at that point, it's useless what we can do, what God can do. And they can defile their conscience so much to a point. But you got to understand this. What you got to understand is that there are cases of homosexuals, Satanists, and so many people yeah. who you would think to be reprobate, yeah. but then they got saved in the Lord Jesus Christ. So you know what the answer to this is? The answer to it is that we don't know who's reprobate. That's the idea. We don't know who's reprobate. And not only that, we don't know what's going to happen later on in life. Things happen. Things change. Didn't you know that a lot of things can change? Sometimes, uh, I do know this, when wars or natural catastrophes happen, if you look back at history, a lot of people suddenly start to become more religious, yeah. more believers. So you don't know what's going to happen that can change people, see? All right, here's another thing right here. Another thing is to look at who these people are at Romans 1. And this is what these wicked people don't do. They always stress Romans 1, but they don't jump to Romans 1 and continue the passage. So let's look at Romans 1. Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, verse 30, 31, and 32, right? These are all these sins that these people do, right? Now continue at chapter 2, verse 1. Therefore, see, continuing from that context of Romans 1, of this reprobate, thou art inexcusable, O man, whosoever thou art that judgest. For wherein thou judgest another, thou condemnest thyself. For thou that judgest doeth the what? Same, thing. Same things. Same things as what? Same things as verse 32. Who knowing the judgment of God that they which commit such what? Things are worthy of death. Oh, now let's keep reading here. But we are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth against them which commit such things. That matches with verse 32. Mm -hmm. Judgment who commit such things. Oh, so it's too late for, uh, well, keep reading. Verse 3. And thinkest thou, O man, that judgest them which do such things and doest the same, that thou shalt escape the judgment of God? Or despisest thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering? You gotta understand, sometimes God is letting them do these sins yeah. where they get so much into wickedness where they can get sick and tired of it. It's true, you can defy your conscience and do all that, but didn't you know that you can do so much to a point where you realize it's empty out there? It's nothing? But keep reading. And knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to what? Oh, did you read that? Did, oh, let's hear that again. It's what again? Repentance. Is that right? Yeah. Repentance. Oh, my goodness. So Romans 1, we're done. Do such things are worthy of death. So let's kill all the sodomites. Yeah, I thank God that those people got killed at Orlando. You wicked, evil yeah. person that you are. You are full of the devil because that could have been you. And you're like, no, that wouldn't have been me because I wouldn't have ended up like that. You, how you end up to be a homosexual is you reject God, you reject God, you reject God. But you got to realize this. You don't realize what kind of environment That's that right. they came from right. that led them to that wicked, sad path. That's right. You can't just judge every wicked, heinous sinner out there 
And you got to think about this. It's because you were born in a Baptist family and church. It's so easy for you to judge. And Romans 2, that applies to you hypocrites. Who are you that judge? So when they quote Romans 1 to you, you get on those cult pastors and keep reading Romans 2 and say God's condemning you too. Get them. Get them. But let's keep, uh, and not only that, they're included in verse 29 to 32. Who are you that judge? Because you committed the same things too. Mm. Get them on that. So they can change. So guess what? Homosexuality is, now this is so strange to me. So it seems like these pastors believe that this thing cannot be changed. So they believe like the homosexuals, they're just fixed like this. There's nothing that can be done to change it. Hmm, so these anti-Sodomite cult pastors are actually agreeing with the Sodomites right here and teaching this doctrine that, yeah, if you get into that lifestyle, you can't change your fix like that. Hmm, who's the real Sodomite now, huh? <laughs> they don't like that. But the Bible says you can what? Repent? That's right. You can change. Amen. All right, now. Let's look at, now I have seven more points, but I'm just going to look at one more, okay? Let's look at 1 Corinthians 6. 1 Corinthians 6. And then we'll close it here. And then good night to everybody. All right, let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 6. And then we'll read verse 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, and then we'll read verse 9. The Bible says, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind. See, so those are homosexuals. Uh, verse 10, nor thieves, nor covetous, etc., etc., cannot go to heaven, right? But look at verse 11. And such were what? Some of you. But ye are at washed, but ye are sanctified. See, they can get saved. See, homosexuals can get saved, 1 Corinthians 6. So this debunks this wicked doctrine. Sodomites can get saved. Now, you know how they debunk? They know this ugly verse. So you know what they say? So this guy, he talks like this, and a lot of homos, you know, homos, they just want to identify everyone with them. So then these homos are getting on his voice and then saying, well, he's like a homo like us, you know. So it's just, um, it's just ridiculous. It's a circus, these homosexuals fighting with these uh, anti-sodomite cult pastors. It's just a circus, man. But anyways, so this cult pastor, what he's going to use is that, well, what is the nor abusers of themselves with mankind is actually referring to a forcible, uh, it's forcible, it's kind of like man rape, so to speak, let's just say, okay? It's man rape. So then there are these children who, unfortunately, which is true, I'm not saying it's all cases, but there are cases in which it is true. And if you don't believe me, just look at the prisons, okay? Just look at the prisons and see, you know, those who were sexual predators, what their, uh, what, where they commit sodomy, all right? And it was forced too. Yeah. Okay, so anyways, let's just resume. The point is, is that some of these unfortunate children were forced into this relationship oh, by yeah. the sodomites wow. and then even raped, yeah. So then what they will claim is that, no, this is referring to man rape right here at verse nine. It's referring to that case. It's not referring to abusing themselves, uh, their own body with uh, other, with the same sex. But here's the idea, is that if you, uh, I'm not going to debunk this. All you have to do is look at Romans 1. Abusers themselves with mankind. Look at Romans 1, your favorite passage, and it shows that they, what? They abused the natural use and their ordinate affection. But look up abuse and look up mankind and see if that does not refer to sodomy. Okay? But aside from that fact, let me give you one chilling argument that's going to disturb these anti-sodomite pastors. You know what you guys did? You guys are quoting homosexual priests and homosexual so-called Christians who want to justify their sin by saying, this verse is not referring to homosexuals. This is referring to man rape. Yeah. Now, where did you learn that argument from? That's right. That comes from a sodomite mind. Mm -hmm. Who's a sodomite now? <laughs>